Hi everyone. I'm Ant Vice. I whisper at clusters at perfect scale. And uh, today we're going to be talking about load testing. Yeah, and, and uh, I'm Ivan. Uh, I work as a site reliability engineer at perfect scale. So we build a platform, probably as most of you. And we will be talking about load testing uh, in Kubernetes at scale. Uh, with um, K6. Yep. Okay, so uh, an interesting question that I haven't asked yet. Uh, who here considers themselves developers? Okay, a few hands. And who here is on the, like, on the DevOps SRE side of the equation? Uh, nice. Okay, most of you. Well, quite expectable. What do developers care about Kubernetes after all? What? <laughs> <laughs> so this is a question to the, to the platform folks. Uh, has it ever happened to you that the developers come and surprise you with a question you don't have a good, question, a good answer for? Yeah, happens sometime, right? And something like that happened to yeah. you even, right? Yeah, so a couple weeks ago. Um, so perfect scale, we have admission controller in Kubernetes. We receive a lot of requests and we serve them. And now the question was, hey, we expect to have higher load to our admission controller. How will it behave? And I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, so even, actually, how do you answer the question? Well, it's, is it like how it behave? Yeah. How it behave? Is it what, like, what, what's the behavior, right? Yeah. What is what is the behavior? So one one question of that is actually asked is I have my expected load. Will my application support that? So you can have a change in this expected load, or uh, what is the load maximum load my current configuration um, can support? Or we have an SLA, or we have an SLA change. Will I be able to maintain this SLA? As, as my load goes. And usually underneath all these questions, you have another one. Where is my performance bottleneck for my application? What, like, when I, when I hit the wall, what is the wall I'm hitting? Right, so to answer all of this question, there is a technique that's been a little bit forgotten in our cloud native world, and that technique is called load testing or performance testing. So who here does load testing for their workloads? Oh, wow. Okay, we have a number of hands, more or less maybe like 15%, I would say. So yeah, uh, it's like, it, it's old. We've been doing performance testing 20 years ago, but somehow in our cloud native world, this has been forgotten or maybe we're just scared to do load testing because it gets very complicated, right? Because in the cloud native world, it's very hard to define what our SUT is. So an SUT is the system under test. And when we're cloud native, suddenly this system becomes something very ephemeral, right? We have lots of services. Each service is running multiple replicas and these replicas talk uh, among themselves in multiple protocols, and uh, we don't really know what kind of tests to run because there are open model load tests and closed model load tests, and it really depends on what's that question we're asking. So it's, it's not easy. Yeah, and, and what, it, what makes it even harder is that, as we, as we found out, that it's not a one question how it will behave, but it actually is so much more questions and you can go deeper and deeper the stack. Um, so after all, what is, like after we answer the question how my system will behave, we have a following question, where is my bottleneck? And so um, there was a presentation here uh, today um, before us and uh, they said, well, a cloud, they say it's finite, uh, it's infinite, but it's not infinite. So all our resources are not infinite. And we always need to remember that 
we always have some bottlenecks in our application for uh, memory, for CPU, our net, our network uh, connection pooling to database or whatsoever, or if, if you have distributed system that uh, the components talk to each other, so you always have bottlenecks somewhere down the line. They do not scale infinite. Yeah, and the reason why we care specifically about performance and resource consumption is, of course, again, because we work at perfect scale. What perfect scale does is optimizing the performance of containers running on Kubernetes. And what we know is that setting the resources, the requests, and the limits for containers is very important because bad things happen when we don't set them correctly. You can see this table here that has a very good representation. When we're under-provisioned, of course, there are always reliability and resilience issues. But even when we are over-provisioned, we're not only wasting money, but also we lack the cutoff switch that can lead to the no noisy neighbor problem. And of course, if we're not defining anything because we haven't load tested and we don't know what the, re the requirements of our applications are, then of course, nothing is guaranteed. So yeah, I hope we've convinced you, you need to do load testing. And that's what the conclusion that we arrived at and we decided to do it, but then we had other questions, right? Yeah, so we have a platform and what tool are we going to use in our platform? There are many for load testing. Um, for it at perfect scale, we choose, to, we choose to use K6. It's very simple. Anybody here tried K6? K6, yeah. Okay. Okay. A few hands. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's, it's relatively new. That's also well, another reason why we decided to try it, because we like new shiny things. Yeah, well, um, and it's simple, goal-oriented, so, so you get a result out of the box. It's, it's easy to understand what's going on in the test cases. Um, and um, it's resource optimized, it's written in Go, we are, we are Go workshop, so we know how to read the code and fix it if you want to. Uh, and uh, it's automation ready, we can integrate it nicely. Of course, who doesn't like writing um, test, test code in JavaScript? Um, and um, it does support, as, as you run it uh, inside your Kubernetes, uh, you have a plethora of, of the tools uh, you have for case engineering as a part uh, of a load testing, or for example, uh, you can use your uh, favorite monitoring tools to see what's going on during, uh, during the, the, the load test. Um, and uh, there are many open source examples. It's a part of CNCF. Um, and uh, if you want to climb a mountain, why not, why not climb K6? Um, it's, a, it's, a yeah, it's an actual name of a mountain, by the way. Yeah. A mountain. I think, I think it's in Africa. Africa mountain? Yeah, anyway, that was, that was a, a joke. Okay, um, K6 is an actual name. You can, you, yeah. you can Google it. Okay. And another reason, again, we're running on Kubernetes and there is a community supported K6 operator that allows you to run K6 on Kubernetes, the Kubernetes way following the Kubernetes resource model. And uh, basically that, that's where we are. We run everything we do on Kubernetes and our customers run on Kubernetes. So yeah, that was the natural cho choice for us. And that's distributed load testing for you. So how do we do this even? Yeah, so um, uh, two important things. Um, so we are going to do this more info uh, and then we will have a demo. So this is like a, a first uh, very simple test example. Uh, so this is a code that will be executed as a part of load testing. And here you can see a default function. This is something that is executed in parallel uh, in, in a parallel of number VUCs, which means virtual users. So this loop will be executed um, in parallel 10 times for a duration of 10 seconds. In this case, uh, we are doing a closed, uh, closed uh, loop uh, model load testing uh, where we will wait for results or until this uh, function executed, sleep for one second, and only after that, this virtual user pick up uh, the other function. So this is like a, a, fir a first important part. And of course, in the test, you can specify way more details. For example, ramping up uh, how much request you send, or uh, you can use different virtual users. You can have a different scenario. So like not only default function, but a couple more. Uh, and it supports a lot of protocols. Uh, so uh, gRPC or some um, uh, or uh, native uh, databases uh, protocols 
for some of database are also connected. So let's go to the second part. So we and what about this create config map command? Oh yeah, right. So um, we are going to run this inside our Kubernetes cluster. So there are two ways how you can actually like kind of deploy this code to the cluster. The first way is uh, create a config map. That's that's our preferable uh, way, and you can uh, mount it as a volume uh, to uh, executors. So uh, there's like a if you will want to replicate it in your cluster, um, then create config map, and then. Yeah, so once we've written the test, we've created the config yep. map, we've put it in the cluster, then? Mm -hmm. Then a test run. So this is a CRD, uh, K6 operator operates, um, um, and um, it's a kind test run. Uh, in some of older versions is uh, K6. You specify name, namespace, and you have parallelism. And this, this is a cool thing. Um, why? Because sometimes you want to run a couple of replicas in your cluster, and you want to, for example, locate them in different AZs. Let's say you have uh, your service run distributed in a couple AZs. You want to load it as you would have a user's coming, uh, like a user request coming. So you can do this with parallelism. You can specify all the all the pod specs, like pod affinity, uh, pain toleration, anything you like. Um, you don't want to get limited by network bandwidths to hammer some of your favorite services. So you specify parallelism. In this very simple example, um, we provide a script, and the script is, in this case, is a config map we created previously. So what it means that we will execute, so we will divide our 10 VUs across this, this four parallelism, so every job will be executing two, two, and, two and a half, um, whatever it means, um, and it will be executed default function in this parallelism in our cluster. Okay, so I know you're full of theory now and you'd like to see this working in practice. So the, the one final thing, we need to define what we're testing. So in the beginning, Ivan told us a story about how the developers wanted to know how our admission controller is going to behave, right? But that's, that's a new story that only happened last month. But we already have another component that we are load testing. And that's the pricing component. So this, this is our architecture in a nutshell. So we are collecting performance and reliability data from the customer's clusters, and it goes to our backend, and the backend is distributed. It has a multiple components. And one of the very important components in our system is the pricing component, because we're optimizing clusters for performance, but in the end, we're saving you cloud costs. So we need to continuously pull the costs from the cloud, augment them with, with your you know, special discount data, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's what the component does. It has to be highly available. Uh, different other components talk to it. So we need to make sure each time our developers release a new version that there was no performance degradation, right? And that's exactly what Ivan is going to show us. Yeah, so uh, let's, let's move to a presentation side. Um, but first, a small prayer to the demo gods. Oh, well. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so I don't know how to talk and, talk and, and do this. I do. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. So, um, as a platform, as a part of our platform, we heavily use GitHub Actions. Uh, anybody use GitHub Actions? Yeah, that's, that's really nice. Um, and um, so we are going to provide two inputs, this image tag one and image tag two. So we are always want to compare versions when we do a load test, and we want to isolate them. So we are deploying two versions of application, and then for each version separately, we are going to run a load test, connect to the cluster, all that, install a separate, we use Helm chart uh, for deploying. We run a load test, we wait until it's finished, and uh, we clean everything up. Uh, so I'm going to uh, run the load test, and... So if, if I understand correctly, in order to run a test, you need to 
create a custom resource and then in the end you need to delete it, right? Uh, there is a, a, a detail. So if you if you um, if you're going to apply again the same CRD, it won't be rerun by K6 operator. So we are always clean, cleaning up. So uh, we expect our image tags uh, match commit commit references. So I'm going to provide two versions. I'm clicking run workflow. And uh, this is running. So we have uh, we have three jobs: run for image one, run for image two, and then we have a summarize. So as it's running, uh, let's uh, let's go and check how it looks. Um, this benchmark. So uh, this is a slightly more uh, complicated example than was in um, what we showed, what I showed you before. So we are going to execute this function um, in our views. Uh, and we are sending the request to this URL, uh, and this variable we pass as a part of GitHub action. So uh, this load test will hammer on this specific service uh, in the cluster. And this is our static payload. Um, we, don't, we don't care for this uh, about the old database caching, caching and stuff. So we're just receiving, and then we are comparing a status code, and if um, the check is a, is a very cool, uh, function uh, inside K6 that allows us to check response codes or maybe content of responses. And this is this slightly more complicated test case. And then how we are going to execute it. We are ex so, so this is JavaScript, yeah. but it's not that bad, right? Yeah, it's not it's not that bad unless <laughs> you have more than one file. Um, and I'm sorry, I I actually wrote in JavaScript. That's that's a very nice language. Uh, so. Um, and we are executing parallelism, uh, so this will run in two jobs. They're not going to run a separate host. I don't care for this case. And I'm going to map this config map, main.js, uh, and uh, this will do the magic. And now a couple more details uh, that uh, we are using experimental output feature uh, of a K6. So K6 support a couple of ways how we can output results. Um, and one of them is actually pushing the metrics to Prometheus Remote right? So that's what we are doing here. Anybody using Prometheus Remote right? by the way? Yeah, that's cool. Hey, okay, a lot of you. Um, yeah, nice. You. Uh, and, and I'm providing tags. That's, that's not the way Prometheus was originally designed to work. <laughs> yeah, uh, so, uh, so we are having a tag one and tag two, and this will uh, complement our metrics exported to Prometheus. Uh, so our metrics will uh, will have this cardinality of which test ID it's associated with, and in GitHub Action, it's associated link to our GitHub Run ID. So we are able to see, oh, in Prometheus, this is what the metrics we get, and we pass a version ID, which is in our case corresponds to commit trap. And there are like a couple more details um, that allows us to build nicer dashboards uh, in Grafana as a result, and we provide resources. So uh, let me see if it's finished. Yes, it did. It, it did, and we have a summarize, uh, summary, summary. Um, I click load test, uh, and the way how it works, uh, we just plug in uh, this variable as a template uh, when we open this link, and we can see uh, two test uh, results. Uh, we can see how much uh, peak load uh, we reached in this test runs. Uh, we can see uh, latency, so 99 latency was 141 second here, and for the second one, it was uh, slightly lower. Uh, so I think we're going to check with developers and products if they're fine with that and see if we proceed or no. Um, so that, that's it. I'm going to. I say no, no. What? Let's make them rewrite the code. Okay. Okay. Uh, slideshow. Okay. So. Um, and a summary. Oh, um, another thing, uh, we did a cool, uh, cool thing. Uh, we actually benchmarked S3. We use S3 for storage. So if you want to uh, see more like detailed and slightly more complicated example, uh, go there. There is like also code available on GitHub. Um, and yeah. yeah so thanks. K6 is good not only for you know testing the services on Kubernetes. Basically, the thing we were having is we were having some weird latencies. Like we, we had we had S three S three throttles, um, and it's like a kind of rookie mistake. But we um, we already did uh, partitioning for prefixes, and we assumed that it works, but it was not working as we expected. So go go check it out. Maybe it will be of an interest for you.
Yeah, it's a good one. It's the one you've written, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, so to summarize this all, hopefully we've convinced you that if you're a responsible SRE slash DevOps slash platform engineer, you should be load testing your services before putting them in production. Because otherwise you can be sure your service is going to be running reliably and will be able to support the load that it's supposed to support. But it's also important to think of the fact that no matter how much we load test before going to production, there are things we cannot really test, right? Because this is a distributed system. Some parts of our system are managed services that we don't have control of. And weird stuff can happen in production because the networking is different, etc., etc., etc. Some slowness in the system can be related to that, right? So uh, it's very important to continue monitoring your performance while in production even when you're not load testing, even when you're running with real traffic. And for that, you have perfect scale, of course, if you're running on Kubernetes. And uh, that's what we do. And we have a free trial, 30 days, connect your clusters, check how performant they are and how much do they cost you and how much money you can save. And with that, we'll be happy to take Thank your you. questions. Do you have to use config maps for scripts, or is there any other way? Yeah, so you can, uh, you can put your code in volume, mount it to pod, and just go from there. Yeah, yeah. In, in general, if you have longer scripts, and K6 allows you to build very complex scenarios, so the things we, we showed here are simple stuff, but uh, you, you can go much more complex than that with much, many more threads, uh, all kinds of load. Like, for example, here we didn't take care of responses at all. It was 200 or, yeah, yeah, so or you, nothing. So you can, you can have like conditional uh, handling of, uh, of, uh, of responses. Let's say you receive a specific response, you send another request to other service, and you can do that, define the flows. So, so when the scripts get more complex and you have even, you can even have modules, again, this is JavaScript, so you, you can use anything, then it makes a lot of sense to put them on a volume, like have a whole repository of tests that you're running. Okay, what is the fine balance between too much load testing and no testing at all? Tests themselves provide some stress for prod environments. What is tolerable in percentage? Well, um, okay, so the, the, this, this is a good one. Um, I think for you, uh, you decide um, coming from product requirements if you can actually go to production without load testing or no. Uh, maybe some features you expect to not have much load, so you can actually roll them out with integration testing and unit testing. And, and for some features, you want to make sure that you're good in terms of SLA, before uh, before proceeding, uh, so um, uh, so um, the, the the answer to that question um, I I do not know. It depends, <laughs> um, and uh, tests themselves provide some stress. Uh, so uh, in in the cases uh, which I shared, uh, the tests we run in dev environment, isolated installation, uh, in production environment, uh, you could use uh, something called syn synthetic uh, users. To provide um, soak testing, uh, it's it's a one of uh, category of load test when you always uh, create some load uh, to your environment and you always like have the synthetic users that you can monitor in case you don't, for example, have enough load uh, in production environment. But I would uh, suggest you not to run heavy load like spike load testing in production, uh, or at least uh, ask your teammates and managers if that's okay, so you don't you don't um, interfere with your customers. 
Um, yeah, and another way to do this is, of course, running uh, in blue-green environment mm. where you have like the, the live environment and the other one where you can run the load test, verify that everything's working correctly, and then switch over the traffic. Or, or you could, uh, you could uh, copy part of the data to lower environment and do a load test there. That would be more safe approach, I think. Um, but maybe yellowing sometimes is good. Um, I don't know. Is there a way to parameterize the script? So um, in the example, uh, the last one I've shared, uh, we provided. I was saying it's okay. It's not. It was. It was in. It was in VS Code. Uh huh. Yeah. So uh, so here you can see that uh, we read from environment variable called um, SVS endpoint, and I pass this uh, environment variable through env here. So this is this this is one one of the ways. Uh, there there are more complex um, options where you can provide a config uh, and override it. Uh, for us, environment variables were uh, were good enough uh, to use. Um, okay. Um, if you load test an app without any limits set up, will it max out and possibly break the cluster? Um, uh, that depends. Yeah. Max out on what? Again, the the for CPU, it's probably not going to overload because, in general, we don't recommend to set up the limits for CPU. You may have heard about this, but uh, it comes down to the point that the Linux kernel scheduler is a totally fair scheduler, so it takes care of limiting the. CPU usage anyway. So CPU limits can actually cause your application to throttle even when there is CPU available. Okay, otherwise, so, so like the overall recommendation, don't set CPU limits for your containers at all. Okay, regarding memory, if we don't set up limits, yeah, then potentially that specific application can overtake the whole node. But again, we're talking here about testing environments. So you do want something like that to happen when you're running the load test because that helps you discover that there are issues. And then when you discover the issues, you fix them. And when you go to production, you're, I'll, I'll, you're, uh, you're certain or at least sufficiently certain that it's not going to happen. Uh, I'll, I'll add here that um, I recommend always running um, always running this uh, load test pods on separate hosts for, for different reasons, not for reasons not breaking the cluster, but for reasons that you will, you will have a whole uh, bandwidth for yourself on the, on, on inside this instance. So it will, ha it will allow you to have a more predictable load that you are able to execute um, on the specific uh, executor. Uh, so um, no, it won't break the cluster. Um, but if you collocate the pod with some important production component, it can fuck you up a little bit. Um, but you, usually you'll be fine, but you'll get non-consistent result for, for load test. Yep. Any uh, experience? Do you expect from what? I was like, sure. I think this, this, this second. Uh, any experience with any? combination of load testing combined with function test and recording behavior on client accessing we do, we, we do not do that at uh, perfect scale. The, this, this is a very good one. Um, uh, I think we will end up there uh, someday, I hope so, uh, to record the traffic replay, even compare results, um, but uh, it, it's a bit time consuming to build that. Uh, there is, a, I know there is a, um, a product called Metellius, Melosius, something like that, that allows you to generate uh, client behavior but it's like more for of, a, of a just functional testing. So no, we don't do that. Uh, we more of like check um, what like percentage of request land in the specific flows of your application. And then we are able to write a specific scenarios and execute them percentage wise that's approximate to our production load if, if you go to this direction. So the next one, do you expect from Grafana monetization some pattern changes for K6 in future? Anton? Uh, 
Yeah, we, we all know there, th there's been some changes in licensing in some of the tooling we've been using, like, mm -hmm. you know, Terraform is a good example. Uh, I suspect Grafana are not uh, building on monetizing K6 specifically. What they do have is the, when you run K6, they provide you a very easy option to output the results to Grafana Cloud. Uh, and it's, it's, it's easier to set up than what we did, for example, with Prometheus Remote, right? So I think it's their way to lure you to their commercial solution, but K6 itself is going to stay open source. And, and again, it's, it's been uh, submitted to CNCF, so now it doesn't belong to Grafana anymore, so. Yeah, um, and I, I think for K6, uh, usually not a lot of, um, engineers run low tests so, so much, so I feel safe with that, but you never know, maybe tomorrow they close it. Yeah. So uh, we, uh, Perfect Scale is this, this one of our competitors, but not really, um, because it's, um, uh, it allows to set up an air-gapped solution, and uh, from our experiments, uh, their algorithm did not provide sufficient resiliency fixes for, uh, uh, for workloads. So I'm quite confident that we provide battery resource recommendation, and we also work um, in multi-cluster environments. So uh, it's slightly different use case, but if you're happy with that, good. Um, it's uh, something similar to VPA, and there are like other um, others, other players in the field. Um, in fact, if, if I remember correctly, Goldilocks is, is basically on top of VPA. Yep, 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 yep. They're, yep. they're it allows you to manage multiple VPAs because one of the like and it, bad things about VPA is that you have to define a VPA resource for each of the workloads you want to manage. Mm -hmm. And then Goldilocks allows you to centralize all of this and provide you a nice dashboard, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, it's, it's like it's saying VPA is not good enough, so we'll provide a solution on top of that. It's, it is good, I, I, love, I love the idea. Uh, if, if you have success with that, uh, nice. Uh, if, uh, if, you, if you have multi-cluster environment where you want to have like more central manage, managed uh, thing, and uh, we do have a couple more indicators we take in account when doing resource recommendation. Uh, so uh, welcome to join our trial and maybe share feedback with us. And regarding VPA, if, if you ask about Goldilocks. Goldilocks works with VPA. VPA is a great open source tool, but it has its limitations. And if you want to better understand what its limitations are, we just recently, I think last week, we released a, an ebook in uh, collaboration with uh, Learn Kates. Mm -hmm. And it outlines everything, like all the upsides and downsides of VPA. Uh, and it's written by Daniel Polenchik. Some of you may know him. And it's it's really a great ebook. Go to our website, perfectscale.io, download it. It's 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 totally new, released as I said two weeks ago. Uh, a nice read. So yeah, fully recommended. Thank you guys. It was very good questions. <laughs>